Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be covering Photoshop's new generative fill AI feature, and if it's gonna be taking the jobs of photographers, editors, and designers, because I can tell you right now, this tool is absolutely wild. Okay, so if you haven't seen already what Photoshop generative fill is, it's pretty much a AI chatbot that it just lives inside of Photoshop. It's crazy. You just make a selection, you type in this little box what you want it to change to, it takes a little bit of time, of course, and then boom, AI just changes it. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it gets it horribly wrong. But either way, this is a really incredible step in what hopefully could be the right direction for Photoshop and all things creative artists because this tool is on another level. Now at the moment, if you do open up Photoshop and you're updated to the latest update, it actually isn't available. You do need to go into the Adobe Creative Cloud and download the beta of Photoshop. You can only access the new AI generative fill feature inside of the new beta. So make sure if you do wanna play around with this, you head into Creative Cloud, you download the beta, install it. It's really simple. It works exactly like Photoshop does. It just has this new AI tool baked in. All right, so once you have the Photoshop beta installed on your computer, let's dive into Photoshop and let's have a look at exactly what this can do to your photos. So here we are in Photoshop and as you can see, we are in the beta version up the top here and we've just got this photo of me standing in the desert. Nothing crazy in my opinion. Um, I shot this back last year when I came out here with my good friend Luca. Goodness me, there we are. And uh, yeah, it's just me standing. It's uh, not the craziest photo, but yeah, it's pretty cool. We're gonna make it a whole lot cooler. So first of all, like I said, the way to kind of activate this is you wanna come into a selection tool. So either a quick selection, a polygon, or you, know, you can select an area. And after you select, you can then click generative fill. You type what you want in here and then boom, you hit enter, takes a little time and you're pretty much good to go. The other thing you can do as well is you can just hit generate. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna use Adobe's, I guess, AI brain to work out what either should be there or what you want to be there. It's kind of crazy just letting it do its thing. But anyway, what we are going to do is I'm gonna show you a handful of prompts that I use and exactly how I'm gonna use this in my workflow. Because to be honest with you guys, I know a lot of people are using this to create crazy stuff like full UFO galaxies and just landscapes that don't even exist. And for me, that's just really not my style. And to be honest with you, I just wanna be able to enhance reality um, to a little bit more or make locations just look a little bit better and a little cooler. And that's what we're gonna do with this photo. I'm gonna let you in on one little tip before we do dive in though. AI, at least this generative film, is having a really hard time dealing with humans. Um, we'll, I'll show you that right now, to be honest. If we come in here uh, and something that I wanna do because the background of this photo is a little bit average at the moment. If we select over here and I hit generative fill and then if we put something in the back, uh, sorry, into this box such as um, add subtle mountains in the background, oh, background uh, that blend in with the desert. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna let gener uh, generative fill do its job. And then you'll be able to see what happens to me because as you can see here, I'm still selected. The idea, I guess the best way forward is to unselect what you don't want to be changed. So we're about to see here, boom. All right, so now it's added some mountains in there, uh, which is great. But as you can see, I have probably have the weirdest body shape on the planet and I have I don't know what the hell that is. But either way, as you can see, um, this is far from ideal. So you, like the hands just look like it's out of some game from the 90s. This is just not ideal. And now, oh, I've just moved that. Um, but as you can see, yeah, far from ideal. This is not what you want to be doing. So I'm gonna show you how you cannot do that. But the cool thing is, is it gives you some, op <laughs> wow, okay, now I look like I'm pregnant. Um, so it gives you some options that you can kind of play around with. And if you just have a look at the background, the background is wild. To be honest with you, like this is stunning uh, apart from me and I'm, let's, let's remove this now. So as you can see here, what we've done is we've just brought this back to the pre-generative fill. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to uh, click on the a quick selection tool. And then I'm gonna hit option, which is the reverse. So it's going to deselect things. And then I'm just gonna paint me out. And of course, because Photoshop is just on another planet, it has done that absolutely perfectly. And now what we can do is we can add our text in here. So we're gonna more or less go with the same kind of uh, prompt. We're gonna add um, a subtle mountain range in the background of the shot. Uh, in the background, actually, we don't even have to say shot. In the background and blend it in with the desert colors. Okay, let's hit generate. And something that I've also noticed because I've 
done a bit of playing around with this, um, is giving it as much detail as possible. For example, like blend it in with the desert colors. It just ensures that you're gonna get better results from this. Um, I, I've played around and I've, I've tried to add mountains just in general, and it's given me some really super green, lush, flowing mountains, and it's just not the vibe for the desert. But anyway, we've got this here. This has uh, given us some beautiful mountains to play around with. And as you can see as well, it's pretty wild. So all the dunes in the background change as well, um, which is kind of crazy. But if we have a look here, um, we've got a few to select from. And to be honest with you, that's probably the one I would go for. You can also see that my hands and uh, my whole body has stayed exactly the same. There's a little bit of, I guess, I don't know, strangeness on the side here. If we turn this off and turn it back on, it does change it a little bit. And I guess that's just down to Photoshop's selection. Um, but either way, it doesn't look strange. And a mountain range like this is pretty cool. Now, something else you can do is you can just hit generate again. So if I wasn't happy, and to be honest, I'm not super stoked with the results I got from this, I'm just gonna let it do its thing again. You can also change your prompt in that little box before you hit generate again, and you're good to go. So there you go, I've got another three to choose from. So it's a little bit too fake in the background still here. Um, and that has absolutely no mountains. So if we want, we could add a subtle, small mountain range because these are a little bit big. Um, let's hit generate, let's see what we go there. Um, and it's pretty crazy, like you can just spend all day doing this instead of spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, you know, finicky, finicky changing this, changing that, that actually looks crazy to be honest. Um, changing this, changing that, trying to find out exactly what works. And speaking about what works, this is the one that works. In my opinion, that is awesome okay it has unfortunately kind of messed my shirt up a little bit but it just still makes it look i guess like it's a it's a little bit windy a little bit wavy out there uh, but either way this is crazy in my opinion if we turn that off and back on like sure, this little dune here looks a little bit fake since there's pretty much no texture there. Um, but either way, this is on another planet. Now, what we're gonna do as well is I'm gonna dive into a little bit more specific, I guess, areas on me. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come here into my wrist. We're gonna get the lasso tool here and we are just going to draw around here. And we're gonna see if we can add a watch to my wrist because I've seen a few people do this as well and I really think this is cool. So let's say I uh, add a silver, uh, sil silver, silver watch to my wrist. Let's hit generate. Let's see if we can get a nice silver watch on my wrist. We'll see what Photoshop thinks is a silver watch on my wrist. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can, no, we can't. Okay, so Photoshop kind of locks you out when you're, uh, when you're generating it. Okay, here we go. What have we got here? Far from ideal, maybe my selection wasn't as big as it needs to be. Let's, uh, let's select that. Okay, um, add a silver watch. Maybe not to my wrist, maybe that's a little bit too specific. We'll see what that can kind of do. I'm not sure if it's gonna, I guess, use the whole square and add a watch in the whole square, or it's gonna use, okay. All right, it's actually done fairly well. It's uh, not really nailed it, but something like this, if we just zoom out a little bit, you'd never kind of realize, okay, yeah, no, you would realize, 100% you'd realize. Uh, but either way, it's just kind of lost it on the edge there. And like I said in the beginning, it really does struggle with human elements. Um, like, so for example, let's say I wanted to change the color of my t-shirt. We're just gonna select this. And as you can see already, I've got my hands in there, which is something that AI really struggles with across the board. Uh, change my t-shirt. Uh, oh, goodness me, my typing today. T-shirt to um, uh, black. Can you do brands? Black Nike shirt. Okay, let's hit generate. Let's see what happens here. And I promise you that this is pretty much just gonna ruin um, the whole image. It's gonna make it look really strange. But the good thing is, obviously, uh, you can cycle through different ones. And of course, you can go through and you can delete ones as well. It's never, okay, there you go. I have no idea what this is. I mean, look, it's not a Nike shirt. Okay, now I've got a phone in my hand and a, and a, uh, and a watch on my other wrist. Uh, but either way, you can see the hands with AI just are far from ideal. Let's delete that and we're gonna delete this watch as well. Oh, no, that was the mountains. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, now, to be honest with you, I am pretty much more or less happy with this. I think this looks crazy. I'm gonna leave it at this one for now. Um, and I'm just kind of gonna leave it there. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I really don't like to push things too far in my edits regardless, but I really think that this is a cool way to make a somewhat average shot a little bit more exciting. 
something that you kind of want to get out of bed for. So yeah, with something like this, with generative fill, you can really push the boundaries. And of course, the best part is you're not spending hours and hours doing it. You know, I did this in a matter of minutes. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up generative fill in Photoshop. In my opinion, this tool is in Sane. I think it's crazy and I think it unlocks a whole load of doors that were otherwise closed or behind hours and hours and hours of work. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I want to let you know if I personally think that this is going to take the job of photographers, designers and editors because obviously this tool is pretty crazy and in my opinion, it's not going to. Sure, some people are going to get left behind, but if you just work on your prompts, you understand what makes a good shot and you can use AI productively, I promise you this, that you will not be left behind. See, the thing is you still need to prompt AI. You still need to be able to come up with the ideas in the first place that you otherwise would have when you're out shooting, when you're out scouting locations, or when you're designing. You still have to think about them. It's now just taking your thoughts and instead of you know creatively making it on the screen, you're just typing it instead and letting AI do the rest of the work. And of course, the thing is, it's not always gonna be 100% accurate either. As you saw, changing a t-shirt, which should be a somewhat simple thing to do, seems to be a very, very large issue for generative fill, but I'm sure it's gonna get there with time. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up today's video, guys. I hope that, I guess, shows you a little bit of what Photoshop has in store and what it can and can't do at the moment. I think this tool is incredible, and I really cannot wait to see what you guys can do with it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, let me know down below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.